OK, so here are the answers to the questions at the end of the previous chapter. So why don't you pause the video while you tick them off and you can carry on with the next chapter, which is the nervous system. Stimuli and receptors. Now, stimuli are changes in the environment and receptors are cells in our nervous system which detect a stimulus. So, for example, there's light, which is a stimulus, and the receptors for light are cells in our eyes. Sound is a stimulus, and we have receptor cells in our ears. Changes in position are also picked up by receptors in our ears. Chemicals are detected by receptor cells in our tongue and nose and they give us our sense of taste and smell. And we have receptors in our skin which are sensitive to touch, pressure, pain and temperature. And this is a light receptor cell like the ones we find in our eyes. And as you'll see it has the normal features of a cell. It's got a cytoplasm, nucleus and a cell membrane. OK, so let's have a look at reflex arc or reflex action. You need to be able to describe the sequence of events. So, firstly, a receptor detects the stimulus, detects the change in the environment. And this causes an impulse to be sent along the sensory neuron. Now, this word impulse is key. You can't use the word message or anything else. It's got to be the word impulse. So the impulse travels along the sensory neuron until it reaches the end of the neuron. And at the end of the neuron, there is a synapse. Now this is the gap between one neuron and the next one. Let's have a look at a synapse. So here you can see the synapse between the sensory neuron and the relay neuron, the next neuron in the sequence. And there's a gap between these two neurons and the little green blobs there represent the chemical. So the sensory neuron releases a chemical, the chemical crosses the gap and the chemical triggers the impulse in the next neuron. So this would be a synapse for a sensory neuron which is synapsing with a relay neuron. It's also the same for the next gap between neurons for the relay neuron to motor neuron synapse. It would be the same. A chemical is released which crosses the gap and causes the impulse to be triggered in the next neuron. So where were we? An impulse is travelling along the sensory neuron. It synapses with a relay neuron where a chemical is released. The chemical triggers an impulse to be sent along the relay neuron which synapses, there's a synapse between the relay and the motor neuron where a chemical is released and this triggers an impulse to be sent along the motor neuron to the effector. Now the effector is always either a muscle or a gland and the effector organ is the organ which brings about the response. So in a summary the receptor detects the stimulus. It triggers an impulse to travel along the sensory neuron. The sensory neuron synapses with a relay neuron, which synapses with a motor neuron. The impulse travels along the motor neuron to the motor end plate in the effector organ. So the motor end plate is where the motor neuron joins onto the muscle. So the effector organ is the muscle and the effector organ brings about the response. Or if the effector organ is the gland, then the gland will bring about the response. OK, so that's the end of this chapter. Hopefully you've printed off all the notes so you can have a go at these questions now. You'll find the answers at the beginning of the next chapter. Good luck.